Hello everyone, welcome to part two of lecture four. Uh, in this lecture, we'll start by reviewing the Euler's number and then talk about the limits of a function. So remember that uh, the Euler's number is uh, defined as this. So we have one plus one over x, right? To the power of x. So this number will approach to the Euler's number e as x goes to infinity. Right, so this is our definition. Uh, however, we have another shorthand expression, which is that e can be divided, uh, defined as uh, still this number. Right, this particular number will go to uh, infinity. Uh, and our condition is that uh, the we are using the lim stands to stand for the limit. Well, x will go to the the limits. So this is our condition. So this is a shorthand notation. Uh, very useful. So just to get used to that. Um, so in other words, this is the limits of this function as x goes to infinity, right? So this is just some review of the unit number. Um, so now let's talk about the limits of a function. So the limit of function f of x, so we want to know uh, what the value of fx as x goes to, not really to infinity, but uh, can go to any number, for example, c. Right, so in other words, uh, what is the value of fx as x goes to c, uh, or equivalently, what is the uh, uh, the value of f of x? Right, if we were to let x goes to c, um, or or take or take or the distance between x and c uh, uh, is infinitely small, right, goes to zero. So this expression, right, it may not be equal to the value of f when x is equal to c, or in other words, f of c, right? So this may not be the case. Uh, why? That's because, um, so let's just uh, write this as uh, L, right? So let's say the limit of, of fx at the points uh, x equals to c is equal to L. So L may not be equal to this number. Um, let's actually require some conditions, uh, which is that x should be Continuous, continuous, so that this uh, can stand. So, in other words, f of x may not be continuous. So, if it's not continuous, then it may not be equal to the point uh, where x is equal to c, right? Um, let's look at a few examples. Start with the continuous functions. So, we are want to look at the value of x plus two, uh, where x goes to the number, the, the value of two, right? So what is the, the value of this uh, expression? That would be two plus two equals to four because this function is continuous at this point, right? So it's a straight line, it's uh, continuous everywhere. Uh, similarly, we can say what is the, so let's x goes to two, right? And then what is the value of x plus one? And uh, it's similarly it's, it's three, right? So any other functions works the, the same. Um, so this is a case for, uh, for when f of x is, is continuous, and we can also look at it graphically. So if you look at the uh, this function, right? So x equal to zero, y equal to two, uh, straight line, right? So this is straight line. Now, if x equal to two, this x is y, so equal to two, then we will actually be approaching this particular number, which is uh the number four, right? So this is two, this is four. So when we talk about x approaching a number, then x will be approaching from the left side or from the right side, right? So x could be increasing and this uh, correspondingly y will be uh, approaching this value. And then if we're increasing, uh, approaching from the right, then it'll be uh, approaching like this. So all converging at this particular number, which is y equals to four as x uh, goes to, uh, gets closer and closer to the value of two, right? So this is the case when x, f of x is continuous. Now, what if it's not continuous or discontinuous? Discontinuous. So let's look at one example, h of x equals to two the square, the absolute value of x divided by x. So uh, now let's look at this function. So this function, the value can be either positive or negative, right? So it can be equal to one if x is bigger than zero, right? If it's uh, uh, negative, then 
uh, is actually negative one. Uh, this also assuming that x cannot be zero, right? Because it's uh, living in the denominator, right? So now let's try to graph this function. So on the right region, when x is bigger than one, is uh, the value of so assuming the value of one and uh, negative, assuming the value of negative one. And if we know that is discontinuous at this specific point, meaning we can draw the graph as something like this. So uh, draw a circle here, which just to denote that the function is uh, ends here and it jumps from uh, from here to here. And then because it's also uh, discontinuous, then it goes from here. So meaning there's no value at a specific point. So the function is discontinuous when x is equal to zero. Right. So when x equals zero, then we we know that the limit in this case is does not exist. Meaning that if x goes to zero, and we take the limit of h of x, then this is the uh, this means that this limit does not exist. Right. Does not exist. Right. So this is what we mean by the continuous. So this may not necessarily stand. We need to look at whether f of x is continuous or discontinuous. Okay, so that's uh, something we just analyzed. I uh, just uh, skip now. Okay, so so let's look at what it do mean by the continuity or what is a continuous function, continuity. So we see that f a function f is continuous at uh, a particular point, f of x equal to c. Now, um, continuous, continuous at this point if the following the three conditions uh, satisfies. So one, two, three. So there will be three conditions, which are actually quite intuitive. The first one is uh, limits of x equal to c for the function of x should exist. So because the limit to exist, so that uh, uh, the function can uh, the, the the function can be evaluated at this particular point, and also the limit is equal to uh, the 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 uh, the function value, which uh, we explain later. So the second condition is f of c exists, right? So the function itself needs to be continuous. Then this value should exist, and also these two values that right, goes to c the limit should be equal to the function value itself. Right? So this is nothing more than to say that uh, these two should exist and also they should equal to each other. Right. So uh, there are many ex such examples. For example, uh, if I want to draw the function like this, right? so it's a continuous function. It's continuous everywhere. Right. So you can continue everywhere. And if we draw another function, which is like this, uh, this is a circle, meaning it's not defined here. However, it jumps to here. So it's the function starts from here, right? So uh, this function itself is not continuous because at this specific point, when x equals zero, it sort of does a jump, All right? So there's a jump here, then uh, uh, so, so it's, it's not continuous. However, uh, in other regions like here and here is continuous, right? And also the, the, the so in this case, the first condition, uh, the limit exists. Uh, this condition is, is uh, violated. So that's why it's not uh, continuous at a specific point. OK, so we can also look at other examples. So these are the few functions, like linear function, polynomial function, uh, many other different polynomial functions of different degrees. Uh, they are all uh, continuous, right? It's continuous everywhere. Uh, the exponential functions, which uh, we learned about earlier, are also continuous everywhere, right? So there's no uh, break points or whatsoever. The logarithmic functions are also continuous everywhere. So you can choose any value, uh, such as x is uh, positive, of course, and it's continuous everywhere, right? Okay, so now uh, we can also look at what do you mean by a limit? Because just now we mentioned that the limit can be calculated as x approach from the left and from the right. So if say uh, we can say yeah, there's the left hand limit, left hand limit. 
So which means that x actually is approaching a particular value, right? X is approaching a particular value from the left. So when we say from the left, we just add a minus sign and it could be equal to the value of k, right? So we can say the left limit is k. Uh, similarly, the right hand limit can be expressed as x goes to c from the right. So it's a plus sign here. Uh, still f of x and equal to l, right? So uh, a function is this. So of course, that's uh, the, the, the existence of a function of a limit. So a limit will exist, right? Only if, if and only if, uh, if the left limit, the limit approaching uh, from the left is actually equal to the value of the limits if x approaches c from the right, right? So it's all uh, equal to l in this case. Yeah, so uh, of course, uh, one typical example is that if x goes to zero from the left, then the value is actually uh, negative one. However, if x goes to zero from the right, right, in this case from the right, then our value is one. So now, now they are not equal to each other. That's why the limit does not exist. Okay, so that's just uh, on the uh, limit of a function. And we can look at another access, uh, exercise. So x minus two divided by uh, x minus two taking the absolute value. So uh, this example is very similar to our previous example. If we were to draw the graph, now it will be shifting towards the right, right? Because uh, we are minusing two from both sides. That's just seeing that we're actually uh, minusing two from the original function, which is uh, uh, taking this form, right? So we're just shifting two. That means that the function will also look something like, like this. Right, so it's discontinuous. This is the value of two, which is one. Right, so by similar uh, arguments, this function, the limit of h of x as the value of two not exists, right? Does not exist. So that's how we can uh, look at the limit of a function at a particular point, by analyzing the left limit and the, the right hand limit. Right, so that's it for uh, this lecture and uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next lecture.